Hello, good afternoon. So today is a video on the culture identification of infectious agents. So it's quite a short one today, which is about how to identify infectious agents in a laboratory. So let's go through some taxonomic terms first. So the family, which is a group of related genera, the genus, which is a group of related species, a species which is a group of related genes, a type which is set of same within a species, biotype, serotypes. So the most commonly used term in the species name is Streptococcus pyogenes, so the abbreviation is S pyogenes. Notice how the pyogenes is in italics. There are always two parts to the species name, one defining the genus, in this case the Streptococcus, and the other in the species, in this case pyogenes. The genus name is always capitalised, but the species name is not. Both species and genus are underlined or in italics. Isolation identification of bacteria from patients aids treatment since infectious diseases caused by different bacteria have a variety of clinical causes and consequences. Acceptability testing of isolates. This establishes the minimal inhibitory concentration, or the, otherwise known as the MIC, which can help in the selection of antibiotics for therapies. So it can help recognise that certain species or strains that are being isolated atypically can suggest a disease has out outbreak has occurred from contaminated hospital supplies in the case of Clostridium difficile or poor aseptic technique in the part of the hospital personnel. So where the patients are suspected of having a bacterial infection, it is used to isolate visible colonies of the organism in pure culture on the agar plates and then the speciate, and you can speciate the organism. So in a diagnostic laboratory, laboratory, many samples must be categorised each day and results obtained as quickly as possible. Tests must be easily learned, low in cost and rapidly performed. These classical methods for speciation of bacteria are based on morphological and metabolic characteristics. So, steps in the diagnostic, diagnostic isolation and identification of bacteria. Step 1. Samples of body fluids, blood, urine and cerebral spinal fluid are steeped on culture plates in isolated colonies of bacteria which are visible to the naked eye appear after incubation for one to several days. So the most commonly used plate is blood agar. From blood agar? you'll get a lot of organisms uh, growing on it. Each colony consists of millions of bacterial cells. Observation of these colonies for size, texture, colour and if grown on the blood agar, hemolysis reactions is highly important as a first step in bacterial identification. Whether the organism requires oxygen for growth is another important differentiating characteristic. Colonies are gram stained and individual bacterial cells are observed under a microscope. Bacteria are speciated using isolated colonies. This often requires an additional 24 hours of growth. growth. So if you're on your blood agar plate, which is the most characteristic, you would just take colonies from that, stick on another plate as well to see how it would grow. You can do further tests as well, like oxidative tests, catalase tests, etc. So under the microscope, the appearance of the bacteria was observed. Most questions asked are, firstly, is it gram positive or gram negative? Look at the rods, etc. Look at see whether it's cocci. What is the morphology? As I said, R rod, cortis, spiral, pleomorphic, the colour is really gram positive, gram negative, is it red or is it purple, is it pink? Do the cells occur similarly or in chains, pairs, is it diplococci, for example? How large are the cells? As well as the gram stains or other less commonly employed stains available for spores and capsules. So another similar colony from the primary isolation plate is then examined for biochemical properties. And this is the question, will the bacteria ferment a sugar such as lactose? In some instances, the bacteria are identified by aggregation with commercially available antibodies recognising defined surface antigens. Certain human pathogens, including the causative agents of tuberculosis, Lyme disease and syphilis, cannot be isolated in a laboratory or grow extremely poorly. So for, for tuberculosis, you would use what's called a cat laboratory-free containment laboratory. Successful isolation can be slow and in some instances impossible. Direct detection of the bacteria without culture is possible in some cases. A simple approach to rapid diagnosis as an example of antigen detection is used in many doctors' offices for the group A streptococcus. The patient's throat is swabbed and streptococcal antigen is extracted directly from the swab without prior bacteriological culture. The bacterial antigen is detected by aggregation, agglutination or of antibody coated latex beads. Bacterial DNA sequences can be amplified directly from human body fluids to PCR, polymerase chain reaction. In this fashion, large amounts of specific genes or portions of genes can be generated and readily detected. For example, great success has been achieved in rapid diagnosis of tuberculosis. 
Finally, direct microscopic observation of certain clinical samples for the presence of bacteria can be helpful. So you, you can use detection of um, material for detection of microbacterium tuberculosis and sputum spit samples. Periodical identification of an antibody response in patient serums to the infecting agent can only be successful various weeks after the infection has occurred. So these are all the ways to diagnose the cultural identification of microorganisms. So as I said, as a recap, you need to look at the size once it, once it's been the, the type of plate has been cultured on. Uh, isolate the colonies, view the view the colonies under a microscope, you know, do phytoseological tests, etc. You know, and eventually you end up with a characterized microorganism. So that was just a very short video today. Thanks very much for listening. But there'll be further videos. I've also got other videos as well currently made regarding specific microorganisms, but more will be getting made as well in the future. Please tune in. Thank you.